Hello guys, going to 3456789 here, and I've just completed work on my CPU. Now before I get into its functions, I'm going to uh, first cover its components and their operations and so forth. So, um, to get right into it, the ALU has four functions. It can do OR, carry in, flood carry, or cut carry, and it, uh, within at least, at maximum two cycles, performs any function I want. Besides right shift, but that's not really necessary because of other functions the CPU as a whole can do. And uh, then it goes into these three dual read registers. And uh, yeah, so the first dual read register uh, has a direct output with no read mechanism. It just outputs whatever's stored uh, for the first three bits into the uh, address of this uh, eight bytes of memory. Now this act can act as a stack, as I have it set up right now, or it can act as RAM if you use the immediate to uh, access it. So um, it has 8 bytes of local memory, uh, which are not as quick access as the registers. This is not the same thing as the external memory, which I will have, which will act more like the proper CPU memory. Okay, so after that, um, I have these two registers out here which function as my output registers, one of which will store the data and the other will store my flags which will also be read just like data, only move to a different location. So um, there you go, that's about the entire loop. Now the uh, branch, it ha the flags it has, excuse me, the flag it uses to branch is carry out and uh, that's it. It only has one flag and I find it to be obviously the most useful. Carry out is really the most useful flag and I use it to do everything. I use it to tell me uh, if I have any bits on. I use it to tell me if uh, I have any, uh, if my output is positive or negative and so forth. Now um, over here I have the two uh, six-bit addresses for if or else when I'm conditionally branching depending on my data. So inside the CPU itself it branches depending on its data. Outside the CPU I will have another program counter which branches depending on either data or uh, non-data dependent uh, flags. So that's all good. Now this right here is uh, 64 words of program memory and in this I'm encoding the functions of my CPU. Right now I have uh, several encoded, not really sure if I'm going to keep them all or not. Uh, I'm just going to go over them really quickly. Uh, at address 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, I have rest position and this is uh, the default uh, position of the uh, counter, the program counter. It will go here by default and it will stay here if you don't input anything. So this is basically doing nothing and continues to do nothing. Here I have pointer reset which basically uh, turns the register uh, where I'm storing that address for the 8 bytes of memory to 0. Here I have push data, um, here I have pop data and this treats those 8 bytes as a stack. Um, here I have uh, save the sum of register 10 and register 11 to 11. Here I have move some data around in my registers. Uh, here I have subtract 10 from 11, save to 11. Uh, here I have or 10 with 11, save to 11. Here I have nor 10 with 11, save to 11. And over here I have one of my longest functions, which uses a lot of uh, data dependent conditional branching. And uh, here it uh, does compare 10 to 11 and save result as a 2 bit number at address. Uh, 1 1. Or, sorry, at address, yeah, at address 1 1, I think. I should probably make that clearer. But anyway, it saves, I, it saves 0 0 to uh, register 1 1 if 1 0 is equal to 1 1. It saves 0 1 at register uh, 1 1 if 1 0 is less than 1 1 and saves 1 0 to register 1 1 if 1 0 is greater than 1 1. Okay. And here I have some more functions. It takes input and stores it to 1, 0. These are getting input functions. Take input and store to 1, 1. Uh, stop taking input. So both of these right here, 
these two jump to here when they've gotten input and that branches back somewhere else if you want or goes somewhere else. And then this left shifts and stores the output to uh, 1, 1. So then I've got one more function right now. I can add a ton more if I want or remove these. It really doesn't matter. It's all arbitrary. Um, this generates a constant, uh, so 1, 0 to the n, where n is the integer stored at 1, 0, and it stores the output at 1, 1, I think. Or at 1, 0. I'll have to check. Uh, anyway, that's all great. Here's my program counter, and uh, 6 bits, and it does conditional branch and increment. And that's it. That's all I needed to do, because... It doesn't need any offset because it's not dealing with uh, general data. Everything is programmed directly into this ROM, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, so yeah. Now, the actual program itself, these are functions it can perform that are stored in the ROM. The actual program itself will be input into these six, by six bits, and that will make this program counter branch. Now, the clock has two speeds. One is for data-dependent branching, inside the ROM, so if the program, if the function needs branching, then it will uh, run on a 26 tick clock, and everything is absolutely precise, I've timed everything precisely, that's as fast as it could run, it actually could run on a 25 uh, tick clock, however, um, I had to add a tick to the whole loop because, uh, unfortunately, using uh, this kind of clock, it can only do even number uh, even number loops. Okay, so here I have the uh, clock on and off switch, and here I have the 26 tick or 10 tick clock. Uh, the reason I have a 10 tick clock is because the data loop itself is only 10 ticks, and so I can perform functions that don't need uh, data dependent flags uh, at a 10 tick rate. So let's begin with uh, a function that takes 26 ticks. Uh, and we'll do the uh, branch, we'll do the compare function. I think that this will make it compare. Um, yeah, so if that's powered, that's not, oh, so I want it powered. No, wait, I don't want it powered. If that's not powered, that will be on. Okay. And, uh, I'm not going to bother inputting any data of my own, I'm just going to use the data that happens to already be in the registers just to save time and because my frame rate is rather low due to uh, all of this redstone. So it's going to compare the stuff in 1, 1 with the stuff in 1, 0. And uh, let's double check what's in here. Okay, so in the first, in the 1, 0 register, I have. Uh, stored zero. Oh, wrong register. Whoops. I have stored a very large number. And in that's 100, no, 255. And here I have stored zero. Okay, great. So that's going to be easy. Um, so we know that 255 is greater than 10 by the biggest amount that anything in this could be. So we're going to uh, branch to, uh, what is that? Yeah, I'm going to branch here. Okay, so let's turn on the clock. Okay, there we go. Oh, man, sorry, guys, for the lag. This is pretty bad. Okay. So also... This is just due to my video being laggy, nothing else. Um, I'm going to turn this off now because it shouldn't branch back to the beginning. Um, okay, so it's done now. It's in rest position. I'm going to turn off this clock so I stop lagging. Uh, once this is absolutely done, I'm going to coat it all in glowstone to prevent any of that lighting update lag. Um, so over here we should see that we have, uh, I think, 1-1 one, one stored to a register. Yeah, here we go. So we have 1-0 stored to the register. Uh, notice that this is inverted because I have torches here. 
So the, do the data that's actually stored is the inverted version of what I actually input, and then it inverts on the output. So let's see what that corresponds to over here. I have one zero stored, so that meant that the register one zero was greater than one one. Okay, there we go. And as you remember, that's exactly what it was. It was 255 compared to zero. So it stores my flags in the registers. So I treat my flags just like data, which is uh, kind of an important generalization, I think. I'm not exactly sure, though. I'll see how I use it in the future. Anyway, uh, let's try something else now. Uh, we're going to do the 10 tick clock cycle. Um, and because I've all the other functions here depend on the data already in it. Uh, I just made a quick little function which is two lines uh, and all it does is count. So I'm just going to flick that on, turn this on. Oh no, I'm not going to turn that on yet. Okay, so first we're going to do this. And that's going to branch to the uh, thing that sets the register to zero. Let's start this on. And it's going to count. So there you go. It branched now. It should have at least. It branched here. Okay, there you go. Unfortunately, the chunks are updating rather slowly because I'm recording. Um, so now we're going to branch here. Yep, there you go. You can see that that worked. And now we're going to watch the data as it counts. And it should have started at zero, but considering it's on a 10 tick clock and it took us a few seconds to get over here, it's probably not going to be there. Okay, so as you can see, now it's on, uh, what is that, 16 plus 4, uh, 16 plus 7 is like 20 something or other, I can't remember. Also, notice this bottom bit flickers. Uh, that's because the carry-in is on by default now, because it's just adding one each time to a register. And so, uh, unless... Uh, this bit is off in the actual data, this will remain on. So the, f the data comes in three tick pulses and so this will pulse off for three ticks when uh, it, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you should see that it's pretty clearly counting right now. Um, yeah, if you want to see how accurate it is, I can set up some repeaters, but I'm lagging so much I don't think it'll make a difference. Uh, yeah, so that's it counting. And it counts really quickly. Uh, see, the chunk updates are not working very well. You can't even see those working. Okay, anyway, um, that's about it. So now let me get into uh, what it's going to be doing later. Um, turn this off. Oh god, this lag. It's on my side. Can't blame the server for that. Anyway, uh, okay, what else? Okay, so now what I need to do in order to make this CPU part of something bigger is I need to have uh, program RAM. And in order to do that, I'm using uh, some registers I just made uh, over here and they're rather small. It doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to see how compactly I can store them. I would use sideways, but unfortunately I can't have bit sizes, uh, or word sizes more than 8 bits easily if I use sideways bits. So I'm using this just in case. And uh, yeah, so that'll be pretty cool. I'm probably going to have 10 bit instructions and then my data will be 8 bits. And uh, yeah, so outside I'm going to have some large memory banks and a program counter which is going to cycle through the PRAM addresses and uh, then I'm going to have an even larger uh, cache of data which will store both instructions and data and they'll be identified by their MSB which will either be one or zero depending on whether it's data or instructions. And yeah, so it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, sorry for the bad quality on the frame rate and all that sort of thing, but it's kind of hard to make uh, it any better than it is right now. 
And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you.